Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name is Linda Williams. I am a Community Outreach and Training Manager with Consumer Action. We are an educational advocacy organization. Today, we've teamed up with Kathleen Tuggle of Her Money to bring you this segment on generational wealth and wisdom. Now, before we get into uh, tips for creating generational wealth, and why it's so important. Catherine's gonna take us on a little trip through history and provide us with some generational wisdom from the one, the only Madam C.J. Walker. Uh, her life um, is uh, in a book that was created by her granddaughter and is part of a Netflix uh, miniseries. Uh, Madam C.J. Walker is down in, in history as one of the first black female uh, millionaires. Now, um, be, before we get into it, let me tell you a little bit about Catherine and some of her accomplishment. She is the chief content officer and founding partner at Her Money. She has over 20 years of experience in the personal finance space and has launched three startups, including FoxBusiness.com. She is a Grace Award-winning editor-in-chief and the co-author of the book, How to Money. And if you don't have that book, I suggest that you go to Amazon and download uh, uh, that book or order a hard copy. Catherine, welcome, welcome. It is an honor, an absolute honor to have you with us today. Can you talk to us and tell our audience a little bit about uh, Madam C.J. Walker and that generational uh, blueprint that she left for us, wisdoms uh, on how we can create um, generational wealth and about her, uh, your interview with her uh, great granddaughter. As a great grandmother, after reading um, some of um, the information that you had in your article, I feel like I am so far behind. Uh, so <laughs> I would love to tell you more. And there's no such thing as too far behind. Everybody is at a different starting point. Some people start over after a divorce. Some people just learn things later in life. And it is never, it is never too late to get started. Um, well, I'll go right into it. Um, basically, uh, my company's called Her Money, and we have a Her Money podcast. And on this particular episode, episode 330, we heard from Madam C.J. Walker's great great granddaughter, Alelia, Alelia Bundles, and she gave us some great insight onto who her great great grandmother was, and you know what led her to create um, generational wealth and uh, what she was really. Um, aspiring towards. And uh, I encourage you guys all to, to check out the podcast and, and listen to us because we do personal insights every week. But basically, Alilia Bundles, um, she wrote the book, as you said, On Her Own Ground, The Life and Times of Madam C.J. Walker. Uh, and she shared some pretty impressive takeaways with us. It's one of my favorite episodes that we had. Um, essentially, Madam C.J., she, she is best known um, for her hair care products, but I think a lot of people don't know um, how, how unique uh, she was for her era and in this industry um, because there, there were really no hair care products out there for black women. So she saw a need in the market like so many entrepreneurs before her and after her have done. Um, and she really took it to the next level with that. You know, she she worked with women uh, to bring her company up to the level of a national organization. They had annual conventions, they had sales conventions, and she was really leading the charge with with tips for all of these women on how to grow and build a business. And, and you know, um, you'll see the quote from Alilia here, but this was a time when most black women were working as, as farmers or as maids, and she was really bringing power to the people and telling them, you can be anything, you can do anything, you can accomplish anything. Um, and you know, this was her. Ma, uh, Madam C.J. was born in 1867. She she passed away in 1919. So her lifetime, during her lifetime, there were really so few opportunities available to Black women, and she really single-handedly changed the game. Um, and she she saw a path for these women to build wealth via entrepreneurship. Um, you know, there we could we could spend all day on the legacy of 
uh, discrimination and intentional restrictions that Black Americans faced when it came time to build wealth and get real estate and invest in the stock market. But she saw a path um, even despite all of this, and that was entrepreneurship to create a business. Um, and she she believed in that pathway, not only towards having a business that you love in the here and now, but also to grow a business that you can then sell for a profit um, or grow a business that you can then uh, leave to your heirs. She also, you know, as we said before, not only was she empowering these women, um, she really wanted them to have opportunities, the women who worked for her. You know, she wanted them to be able to work from home. Um, and I think now, you know, in a post-COVID world, so many of us take working from home for granted, but this just wasn't a thing that women could do in that era at all. So she was really a pioneer in that regard. Um, she wanted to be able to, to empower and, and protect the women who worked for her in a, in a beautiful way. Um, she, she really surrounded herself with an incredible team of people, and I think that anybody um, who has inclinations towards entrepreneurship really understand the importance of this. Your team is everything. You, even if you're not an entrepreneur and you have ever been married, you know the importance of a good partner and how having the right people in your corner can make all the difference. Um, and uh, as Alilia shared, Madam CJ had an attorney who she relied on for um, a lot of her big business decisions. Um, and she looked to surround herself with people who were smarter than her in the areas where she might not be as experienced. And she identified identified leaders who could really carry her message and uh, impart her, her wisdom to others. She also valued a strong presentation, and I loved hearing Alilia talk about this. Basically, she said that Madam CJ essentially had her version of a PowerPoint. <laughs> um, she understood the importance of visuals to tell your story. So she would, um, she had a, an old-fashioned glass projector that would project onto a wall or to a screen, and she would show her hair care products at work, and she would give people like a proper lesson. She would educate them on what her products did in a way that, you know, keep in mind, people didn't have TVs back then. Like they were newspapers, but if you wanted to see visual images and you wanted to see a presentation, you had to do something in person like this. So she was really a pioneer in that way, you know, going town to town, spreading her message in a way that, that really, uh, showcased her talents and her product. Um, and I think there's so many takeaways for entrepreneurs today, right? Like if you're making an Instagram reel or you're making a TikTok video or you're writing an amazing blog, you really have to be able to put your best foot forward and put yourself out there and um, be able to shout it from the rooftops that you have an amazing product. And she really paved the way for women in that regard. She also diversified her assets, which is something that um, we talk about at Hermony a lot with investing. You know, I think a lot of people may have heard that you shouldn't have all your eggs in one basket. So you shouldn't just be investing in one bank. You shouldn't just own real estate or you shouldn't, you know, just have one stock that you like. You, you really got to spread your wealth around um, for, for safety and so that you can get a taste for what it's like to invest in different assets. And, and she really saw the writing on the wall, you know, due to her own success, a lot of other companies um, created hair care products and she could see that it was starting to get a crowded to be a crowded space. So she started to invest in other areas and real estate is one of the areas where she invested. So, you know, really just so ahead of her time in so many ways. But she wanted her money to last. She wanted her money to, to build that. She wanted to build generational wealth that she had seen so many white people be able to do that had been just completely restricted to black Americans. Um, I, I loved learning more about what she did to ensure employee retention and success. Her employees had paid vacations. Again, keep in mind, born in 1867, passed away in 1919. Nobody was giving employees paid vacations. Um, and she was giving them not only vacations, but she educated them on how to save their money and how to invest their money. You know, when she was investing in real estate, she was educating her employees on how to invest in real estate as well. Um, this was just really such a, a beautiful and rare thing for her era. 
Um, and she was always looking for other female leaders, which is amazing. She was empowering that next generation, um, specifically when she would go from town to town, like we talked about giving her presentations, she was looking for other women who were the leaders in the room. You know, if, if all the women were looking to one particular woman um, as their leader or as someone that they respected, that's the woman that she would talk to, that she would bring into the fold, that she would help train and make sure that that she could be an empowering force to the other women in her area. So she knew she knew early on that leadership came from the top down. And then lastly, Alilia shared a personal anecdote with us, which I just loved, and I really encourage you guys to go back and listen to the episode. Um, but she talked about the importance of saving which is something that is so important because when we talk about investing in real estate or the stock market or wherever it is, we have to have money to make those investments, right? We have to have that initial seed funding to start our business. We have to have a down payment before we can have a mortgage. And Alilia did such a great job of, of explaining the financial values that she was raised with. Um, and interestingly, she said that her grandfather who had been a laborer uh, died with more money in the bank than her uh, her uh, father, who was an attorney. So, you know, it's so important to make sure that you are saving. And uh, her dad imparted to her uh, when she came home with credit card debt after college, he said, you have to pay off credit card debt, like do not rack up the credit card bills. And um, so that was one interesting thing that she shared with us that's always been a priority for her is to pay off those credit card bills every month. And when we talk about being able to build wealth, you can't just think about your assets. You can't just think about the money that you're earning and the money that you're investing. You also have to think about your debt, right? Because if you're $40,000 in debt, and you need $40,000 to make a down payment on a home, you're gonna have to tackle both of those things at once because debt, particularly credit card debt, which can be as high as 20%, that can be a major stumbling block in your quest and in your journey to build generational wealth. With that in mind, we talked a little bit about the generational wisdom from Madam CJ, and now we're gonna talk a little bit about building generational wealth. And because I think it's a term that is thrown around quite often, you know, people say, I wanna build generational wealth, I wanna have something to leave to my children um, or my grandchildren, but what does it really mean? Um, it, generational wealth can be really any asset that's passed down from one generation to the next. It can be real estate, it can be businesses, it can be cash investments. Um, you know, there's about $80 trillion that's expected to be passed down from baby boomers to their children and their spouses over the next couple of decades. So there is a major wealth transfer happening in this country. Um, which is just one reason why it's so important that we're having these dialogues now to talk about how to make that money last. Because I think that we, I have known people certainly who got an inheritance or who won the lottery. I've actually never known any lottery winners. I think that would be really cool to talk to somebody who won the lottery. But the point is, I think we've all known somebody who had a cash windfall. And within a few years, that money was gone. And we can ask ourselves like, how does that happen? But but I think it's so easy not to invest. It's so easy not to save. Um, so, so we're going to talk today a little bit about how to build that lasting generational wealth that will be around when you need it, when you need it in retirement, or if you would like to pass it on to your heirs. So one of the one of the best ways to build generational wealth we'll tackle here, and it's all about investing and not just in the stock market. One of the best ways is investing in education that is for you and your children. If you have young children who are gonna to go to college, one of the best ways to invest and save for their futures is with a 529 college savings plan. Um, you know, we know that people who have college degrees earn more over their lifetimes than those without. And yes, college is an initial investment. And I know that student loans can be a burden for people who have, you know, a lot of student loans, but if you, budget and you save for college and you don't go to a college that's too expensive, absolutely a college degree is 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 far and away, you know, worth it. Because with that higher earning power that you get from having a bachelor's degree comes more opportunities to save and invest your dollars. The second way to build generational wealth is in the stock market. We look at the average stock market return over the last hundred years. And yes, there have been ups and downs in the market, absolutely. In 2008, we saw a major dip. And then again, um, right in March of 2020, as the pandemic started, we saw another huge dip. 
But if we look at the last 100 years, consistently the average annual return is slightly over 10%. That is huge. And, and you know, we see that in this way, investing is what is going to help you protect your money from inflation and grow your money over time. Right. So when we talk about the fact that the cost of eggs are through the roof right now, or we talk about the fact that the cost of buying a new car has gone up due to inflation, people who have invested in the market, who have seen that 10.3% return over the last few years, those people don't have to worry about inflation. And this is the power of the stock market. You know, compound interest is the power of the stock market because you just keep reinvesting the money that you're earning. And it's so important to get started early or get started late. You got to get started wherever you can on your life's timeline because it is never too late to enjoy that power of the growth of your money. Lastly, here we have real estate. Real estate, as we heard from Madam CJ, is an excellent hedge against inflation. It's an asset that you can tap into in retirement. Um, you can sell your home if you need to. You could rent out your home. Um, and if you do have rental properties, they become a passive income stream. And a passive income stream might sound fancy, but really it just means an income stream that you don't really have to do anything for, right? Like let's say you own a, a house and you rent it out. Once the mortgage is paid and your tenant is consistently paying you every month, that becomes a passive income stream for you. So you're not, you might have to go over and get a new refrigerator or you might have to do some maintenance on the property right but far and away you don't have to go to work every single day to earn that rental income that rental income is just trickling into you over time which is why real estate can be an incredible way to build generational wealth because not only are you earning the rental income on that property every month for a certain number of years? You can also leave that property to your children or to your heirs or to a niece and nephew, and they can continue reaping those benefits, you know, over the generations. Next, we have passing down or selling a business. And, you know, as we heard um, about Madam CJ, she, she built a business. She was an incredible entrepreneur. And, uh, you know, she wasn't alone. The vast majority of American small businesses, 90% are family owned. Running a business is, is a great way to have a successful livelihood on your own. But once again, just like we were talking about with real estate, it can be an asset for your children and the heirs. Uh, we know that around 30% of family owned businesses get passed down to the second generation. But you know, the reality is your kids might not be interested in the business and that's fine because what you can do is you can sell your business that will generate money that you and your children can invest, which can also be passed down. So even if you run a business that your heirs aren't particularly interested in running, that is still an enormous and beautiful family asset for you to be able to pass down, even if you're only passing down the cash value. Um, if you do plan to pass down the business, you know, hopefully your children will work alongside you to gain an understanding um, of all the ins and outs, because if it's something that you've built over your lifetime, clearly you have learned a lot. Um, and regardless of which path you choose, if you choose to have your children inherit the business, or if you choose to sell the business, you'll definitely want to look at an estate plan. Um, an estate plan can really make sure that things go very smoothly for your heirs so that they're not hit with some enormous tax burden. Um, and that's something that an attorney, an estate planning attorney can help advise you on because the last thing you want is to have worked your whole life and then you know your, your kids end up having to pay some enormous tax bill just because of paperwork. Um, lastly, we have life insurance, and I think that there are some common misconceptions about life insurance. I feel like a lot of people think that it's just for funeral costs or it's just to cover the living expenses for a surviving spouse if you are, you know, killed accidentally. But the truth is, depending on the size of your life insurance policy, that money can be put towards anything you'd like. That can be put towards a down payment on a home. That money could be funding for your daughter's small business. That money could be a fund for your son to invest in the stock market. Um, you know, I, I think people need to think a little bit bigger about what life insurance could be because you don't have to be ultra wealthy to take out life insurance. Um, there was a study I read recently from NerdWallet that 23% of Americans who purchase life insurance they do it to actually build cash value in their life insurance policy 
and save for their retirement. So it's, it's a vehicle that I think is underutilized that people need to look at. And term life insurance is gonna be a little cheaper, but it's gonna end after a certain term. So it's gonna end after 20 or 30 years, depending on your policy. But permanent life policies, they'll cover you for a lifetime. And within those permanent life policies, you can borrow against the cash value of the policy, which is really nice because you don't have to pay a penalty if you do that, like you would if you were borrowing from a 401k. Um, and you can use these accounts to grow and accumulate wealth through your lifetime. So if it's not something that you've looked at yet, I would definitely consider life insurance. Um, and that's really, that's really it. I'll just, I'll go back and recap these last four ways because I do wanna highlight how important they are. The best ways to build generational wealth are by getting educated yourself and your children, investing in the stock market to capitalize on that average annual return of over 10%, investing in real estate, passing down or selling a business if you're interested in entrepreneurship. It's an incredible way to build wealth for yourself and your family. And lastly, taking a look at life insurance. And that really sums it up. We hope that you guys will visit us at hermoney.com. We send out two free weekly newsletters, which include our free podcast as well. And you can make sure that you get all of that at hermoney.com backslash subscribe. And we would absolutely love to have you guys as part of our community because we are learning and growing and investing and building wealth every day. Great, Catherine, thank you for um, that uh, great presentation. And can you tell our audience once more how, where they can find podcast episode 330? Yes, um, podcast episode 330, where we interview Alelia Bundles, the great, great granddaughter of Madam CJ Walker. You can find it at hermoney.com. You could just use the search bar to Google for um, Madam CJ or if you get your podcast on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher, you can search for Her Money Podcast, and then you can just go back to find episode 330 where you can listen. Great, great, thank you. And audience, you're only a click away if you're interested in some consumer action uh, resources. Um, just go to Consumer Action's homepage. You can click on that little burgundy link in the middle and land on our uh, COVID-19 uh, educational project page. You can download a booklet, which I swear should be in every home in America, how to complain. And if you're interested in staying abreast of the latest scams out there, please sign up for our scam grant newsletter. If you're interested in uh, making a contribution to consumer action, you can do so online by credit card or PayPal. Just go to www.consumer-action.org slash given, or you can mail a check to us at Consumer Action Attention Membership Giving, 57 Post Street, 611, San Francisco, uh, California. If you don't have a check, no worries. Uh, you can support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's free. And subscribing helps us continue bringing you these great segments like the one today. So again, let's give a shout out to Catherine Tuggle of Her Money. Uh, and thank you for tuning in today as well. And have a great rest of your day. Until next time, goodbye.